So, welcome back to Otaku No Video. Hey. Um, thank you, as always, for joining us. Uh, where today we're going to talk about the new Blade Runner anime short, mm. Blade Runner Blackout 2022. Uh, this is remarkable for two reasons. One, they commissioned, is it, to be clear, the production company commissioned an anime short that is set in the Blade Runner universe that explains some of the backstory Ooh. that connects between the original film and the new film. That's cool. Mm. It's also directed by a little guy named Shinichiro Watanabe, who directed a little show you may have heard of called Cowboy Bebop. That is good breeding. Yep. <laughs> um, Samurai Champloo as well, and some other, other cool stuff. So Another great one. Yeah. Um, I so, gotta say that. Yeah, no, no, it's, oh. it's, it's a um, So, that, that's the, the pedigree. And the other interesting thing about Watanabe is that he doesn't do like an anime series every year. He's only mm. done a few things. He's very selective. Uh, so the fact that he did this was remarkable. Mm. Um, and uh, without getting too deep into, into plot stuff, it basically mm. deals with a a major event that happened not long after the original Blade Runner mm. that kind of informs the the politics and stuff going on later on in um, uh, in the, the second movie. I assume I have not seen the second movie yet. Um, have you seen the original Blade Runner? The original B Blade mm -hmm. Runner, yes. Yeah, good. Yes. Um, so, a few things about this. Uh, first off, Actually, before we get into, into into that, let's 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 make this also important note. Um, Blade Runner was pretty big for anime. Mm. Um, the the visual aesthetic of oh. Blade Runner. Oh, the visual aesthetic that creating that entire street, mm. the future sort of New York alley mm. uh, uh, main strip. That that in itself, I, I I'm not sure if 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 people are familiar with. Uh, Derek Riggs, but he's mm. an artist who uh, uh, designs covers for the band Iron Maiden, mm. and their Somewhere in Time album was kind of built around that whole concept of the uh, city mm. in the future that has all these unusual things, and mm. you see newer technologies and older technologies, mm. and it has a very particular feel, yeah. because you know things are going to progress uh, both positive and negative, and they're mm -hmm. just going to be very different. <laughs> so, so that 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 style mm -hmm. is is very distinctive when you see it. You say, "Oh, that looks like Blade Runner," and and, and that's where it measured back to. And when you think about anime, and you think about science fiction and anime, and you think about anime, say pre Blade Runner and post Blade Runner, oh. and you, you, know, you think about again Star yeah. Blazers, um, Yamato, Harlock, all these all these these stories um, leading up into the eighties. Um, and you tend to have a pretty, um, how to put this delicately, um, you would often have a, shall we say, simplistic view mm. of mm. how technology would evolve. And yeah, you know, those yeah. And, you know, Gundam did some impressive things, Macron did some impressive things. But then post Blade Runner. Blade Runner really brought it into the area where you had to consider seriously Ooh. some of the ramifications of mm -hmm. what these progress progress uh, steps in science are going to cause mm -hmm. uh, the unintended effects a uh, lot of unintended effects and uh, wow yeah it's it, it, if you think about it it this this the original Blade Runner is really kind of dystopian in mm. some aspects mm -hmm. but it never gives up a hope right and it makes you think about what what that hope is mm -hmm. and why it could come about or not and that's that's what one of the things that makes this short film so interesting is that it maintains that feel and that tone. Mm. Um, um, and it should be also be pointed out, you know, you have anime directly influenced by Blade Runner, like yeah. um, uh, Bogum Crisis mm. and other things like that. But anyway, so um, so tonally, this absolutely feels like Blade Runner. Mm. Um, it has the um, you know, th that whole feel. What what takes some getting used to is the fact that it's anime. Mm. Um, you know, an animated work is not going to look exactly like a live action film. Mm. Uh, there's an opening shot that mimics the that opening shot from Blade Runner, which is stunning. I mean, it's like, yep, this is it. Um, but then you get to those those anime characters, and, and now, yeah, yeah, when I say anime character, I'm not talking. They don't look like Dragon Ball Z. Um, <laughs> animated, animated, um, but in a sort of it's interesting because Cowboy Bebop has relatively 
um, you know, for a more serious anime, it has relatively light character designs, mm. right? You know, they're not you know realistic, incredibly... but not uh, exaggerated characteristics, right. yes. and, and not trying to look realistic. Not not super realistic, time. but mm-hmm. more because they're not using exaggerated mm. for the most part. Express. You know, there's no yeah. Luffy stretching right. his arms exactly. thirty million <laughs> miles. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, um, Spike wears an, an all blue, you know, suit all the time. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, and there, there are all all these little you know, t- tips and tricks they put in there. But um, so this feels more like you know, um, like a film mm. where the character designs um, are. The Animatrix is a great example. The Animatrix. It has that sort of Animatrix. Yeah. Not the 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 more stylistic versions, but those. Okay, you know. Uh, this this feels like that kind of thing. Um, it's relatively short. I believe it is like I think the entire thing is twenty minutes, but it's like eight minutes of credits. Um, <laughs> a, and, lot of uh, a lot of work went into it. A lot of work went into it. So it is a short film, and I will say so. Adam Savage did a spoiler free review of the new Blade Ooh. Runner film, and hey. he said one of the things is that, that he likes about the new film is that. Um, if you can think of the five dumb things you could do to tell you you're in a Blade Runner movie, <laughs> it doesn't do any of those things, right? Oh, good. Um, this short film kind of does. Hmm. There's a lot of, again, they kind of recreate the opening shot from Blade Runner. You know, there's spinners flying all over the place. Um, you, know, you see the reflection in the, in the, in the android's mm-hmm. eyes, the little red dots. Um, a lot of that is featured rather heavily. Hmm. So, and I bring this up not to complain about it, but to say that the film is obviously there to get you into that mm-hmm. mode, get you that tone. Remind you of the whole mm-hmm. Blade Runner before. Yeah. So drawing on people's memories or trying to put them back into that experience and mindset. And it's one of the things I think is interesting about this short film is I don't think the intent of the short film is to tell a a a massively original, completely mind blowing new story. Mm-hmm. In the Blade Runner universe, it is a new story. It does have some very interesting. Um, it is tackling some interesting uh, material within that universe. I, 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 we always wanted to see that explore. This is exploring yeah. that, but it is a. It is ultimately a short film that is meant more as a this thing. Here's twelve minutes more of this thing, mm-hmm. and it feels right. It feels good. Um, but it, it's not, you know, one of the things that made Blade Runner so remarkable is the fact that it is multi-layered. There mm. is symbology. There is a lot of stuff going on. This is more reusing that symbolism as mm. opposed to adding new symbolism, mm. uh, to put it that way. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, so again, not a complaint. So just it's building on the previous it, foundation. It, 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 and I would say more than building. So as opposed to this being a new level of the house, this is a, an add-on to an existing room in the house. I like that metaphor. So, okay. you know, it, again, it's not going to blow your mind, um, but it is going to explore further a and lot And I of always things. wanted to do that. That yeah. was... <laughs> the, 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 some of the some of the science concepts in the original mm. one are just phenomenal. The idea that you could zoom in off of a reflection mm. and get some information. We're moving more in that direction. Oh, yeah. If you start looking at people's photos online you'll notice stuff in the background the mirror <laughs> the glass that shows the person mm-hmm. who's taking the picture or things like that and and now with digital information we can zoom in more and more there's still limitations oh, the sure. csi effect is not <laughs> real you know you can't zoom in <laughs> infinitely but we're getting closer and closer to that kind of technology what was the line there's a line from csi um increase the resolution of the pixels Pixels no, are the <laughs> finite atom there, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't know. You know, you can put in filters and try and guess mm-hmm. things, but you once the pixel is the pixel, the pixel is the pixel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so I think it's it's definitely an interesting film. Um I I'm I'm glad they made it mm. in that sense. The, often when you get these uh, you know, these films will, will come out with these little short subjects and so forth, and sometimes they feel more like, okay, that felt more like a deleted scene. Mm-hmm. You know, that that felt mm-hmm. like it, it's fine. It, it's it's out there, but this felt like a a useful subject mm-hmm. for a short film that allows the the creators of it to to explore that material a little bit further mm-hmm. and to add a bit more to the world as opposed to just being okay. Here is a another moment in the mm-hmm. world. Right, I like that. Uh, which which is definitely helpful. Um, oh, I've got to see this. <laughs> yeah, it is on Crunchyroll. Um, this is the other interesting thing is that it is Crunchyroll exclusive outside of Japan. Mm. So you want to see it? That's where you have to go. 
Um, I'm sure they have a lot of views by now. Um, but yeah, that that is that is a film. I think it's it's definitely a um, a worthwhile addition to the Blade Runner canon. Um, and it's short. I mean, it's not hard to kind of jump into it. So nice. That's the thing. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, watch more interesting anime.